Welcome back. Let's reading some more. The weather is super nice. The weather is very nice. It's a little bit hot. But not like Asia, it's like 40. It's below 30 degrees. I was out shopping. Buy a bit more cola for the weekend and candy. Buy a bit of candy. But this is not that English. And buy some uh, meatballs, rice, and curry. I made some uh, potatoes, creamy potatoes. I will make later and buy uh, more oil. Oil uh, to make uh, fry uh, onions. Some more bread. So I could find. Made a lot of videos in my language tennis <coughs> about uh, Boeing, Boeing uh, 747. That's my airline sim game. So let's uh, read this. I was supposed to make some English video in my language, no, in, in English. Some aircraft videos. Boeing 747 to 400. The Boeing 747 to 400 is a large, long range wide body airliner produced by Boeing Commercial Airplanes, an advanced variant of the initial Boeing 747. The advanced series 300 was announced at the September 1984 Farnborough Air Show targeting a 10% cost reduction with more efficient engines and 1,000 nautical miles, me, 1,900 kilometers, 1,200 me, of additional range. Northwest Airlines became the first customer with an order for 10 aircraft on the 22nd of October, 1985. The first 747 to 400 was rolled out on the 26th of January 1988 and made its maiden flight on the 29th of April 1988. Type certification was received on the 9th of January 1989 and it entered service with NWA on the 9th of February 1989. It retains the 747 airframe including the 747 to 300 stretched upper deck with 6 foot 1.8 m winglets the 747 to 400 offers a choice of improved turbofans the Pratt and Whitney PW4000 General Electric CF6 80C2 or Rolls Royce RB211 524G forward slash H its two crew glass cockpit dispenses with the need for a flight engineer. It typically accommodates 416 passengers in a three-class layout over a 7,285 mi, 13,492 kilometers, 8,383 mi, range with its 875,000 pound. 397 T maximum takeoff weight. Until the first Dash 400 M Comb V was rolled out in June 1989. The Dash 400 D domestic for the Japanese market, without winglets, entered service on the 22nd of October 1991. 
The Dash 400F cargo variant, without the stretched upper deck, was first delivered in May 1993. With an increased tow of 910,000 pound, 410 t, the extended range version entered service in October 2002 as the Dash 400 ERF freighter and the Dash 400 ER passenger version the following month. Several 747 to 400 aircraft have undergone freighter conversion or other modifications to serve as transports of heads of state, YAL-1 laser test, engine test or the spirit of Mojave air launcher. The Dreamlifter is an outsize cargo conversion designed to move Dreamliner components. With 694 delivered over the course of 20 years from 1989 to 2009, it was the best-selling 747 variant. Its closest competitors were the smaller McDonnell Douglas MD-11 Tri-J and Airbus A340 Quadjet. It has been superseded by the stretched and improved Boeing 747-8, introduced in October 2011. In the late 2010s, older 747 to 400 passenger aircraft were being phased out by airlines in favor of long-range, wide-body twinjet aircraft, such as the Boeing 777 and Airbus A350. Development, Edit Background, Edit Following its introduction in 1969, the Boeing 747 became a major success with airlines and the flying public. As the world's first wide-body jetliner, the 747 had revolutionized air travel and cemented its manufacturer's dominance in the passenger aircraft market. In 1980, Boeing announced the 747-300, its latest 747 variant featuring greater passenger capacity. This was made possible by making a stretched upper deck, SUD, previously an option on the 747-200, a standard feature. The SUD was almost twice as long as the original 747 upper deck. Besides increased capacity, the 747-300 did not offer any increase in range, nor did it include improvements in flight deck technology or construction materials. At the same time, 747s were becoming more costly to operate due to a number of factors, notably conventional flight control systems, three-person flight crews, and fuel costs. In 1982, Boeing introduced a two-crew glass cockpit, new engines, and advanced materials on its 757 and 767 twin jets. At the same time, combined sales of the 747 to 100, 200, 300, and 747 SP models, collectively referred to as the 747 classics, exceeded 700, but new orders slowed precipitously. The introduction of the 747 to 300 did little to stem the decline, and itself faced potential competition from more modern designs. As a result, Boeing began considering a more significant upgrade for its largest passenger jet. By early 1984, Company officials had identified five development objectives for the latest 747 upgrade, new technologies, an enhanced interior, a 1,000 nautical miles, 1,900 kilometers, 1,200 mi, range increase, more efficient engines, and a 10% reduction in operating cost. In September 1984, Boeing announced development of the newest 747 derivative, the Advanced Series 300, at the Farnborough Air Show. On the 22nd of October, 1985, the type was officially launched when Northwest Airlines became the first 747 to 400 customer, with an order for 10 aircraft. Cathay Pacific, KLM, Lufthansa, Singapore Airlines, 
and British Airways also announced orders several months later, followed by United Airlines, Air France, Malaysia Airlines and Japan Airlines. Design effort, edit. Seven early customers, namely British Airways, Cathay Pacific, KLM, Lufthansa, Northwest, Qantas and Singapore Airlines, formed a consultative group to advise Boeing on the 747-400S design process. While the aircraft was planned as a new technology upgrade, Boeing originally proposed minimal design changes in order to reduce development cost and retain commonality with existing models. The airline consultative group sought more advanced changes, including a two-crew glass cockpit. As a result of airline input, the 747-400S new digital cockpit design featured cathode ray tube CRT, display technologies first employed on the 757 and 767. The autopilot was also changed to that of the 757 and 767. On the 747 to 400 a software update was added to allow an altitude intervention mode. The 747-400S wingspan was stretched by 17 feet, 5.2 mm, over the classic 747 through wingtip extensions. For reduced aerodynamic drag, the wings were fitted with 6 feet, 1.8 meters, tall winglets. Despite the added length, the wings were 6,000 pounds, 2,700 kilograms, lighter as a result of new aluminum alloys. The horizontal tail was also redesigned to fit a 3,300 US gallons, 12,000 L, fuel tank resulting in a 350 nautical miles, 650 kilometers, 400 mi range increase, and the rudder travel was increased to 30 degrees. The landing gear was redesigned with larger wheels and carbon brakes. Internal changes further included a restyled cabin with new materials and updated fittings. New engines offered on the 747 to 400 included the Pratt and Whitney PW4056, the General Electric CF680C2V1F, and the Rolls Royce RB211-524G forward slash H. The engines offered lower fuel consumption and greater thrust, along with a full authority digital engine control, FADIC which adjusted engine performance for improved efficiency compared with the classic 747S. A new auxiliary power unit, APU, manufactured by Pratt & Whitney Canada was also selected to provide on-ground power for the 747-400, with a 40% reduction in fuel consumption compared to previous APU designs. Production and Testing, Edit See also, N661 US. Final assembly of the first 747-400 began at Boeing Severett Factory, the long-time site of 747 production, in September 1987. More than 50% of the aircraft was produced by subcontractors, with major structures, engine nacelles, and subassemblies supplied by Northrop and upper deck fuselage frames from Daewoo. All components were integrated during the final assembly process at the Everett factory. The first aircraft, equipped with PW4056 engines, was completed over the winter months of late 1987. On the 26th of January, 1988, the first 747 to 400 rolled out at the Everett factory, while the first 737 to 400 rolled out at Boeing Srinton factory on the same day, marking the first double jet liner rollout in the manufacturer's history. By the time of the rollout, the 747 to 400 program had amassed more than 100 orders. 
the 747 to 400 flew for the first time on the 29th of April 1988 under the command of test pilot James Loesch and co-pilot Kenneth Higgins. The first flight was six weeks behind schedule, owing to subcontractor delays in supplying components and extra troubleshooting on the aircraft's electronics systems. The maiden flight took off from Payne Field, site of the Everett factory, and landed at Boeing Field, south of Seattle, after an uneventful two hours and 26 minutes. The 747-400S flight test program utilized the first four aircraft built, one more than the minimum number necessary to certify the aircraft's three engine options. One test aircraft each was fitted with the CF680C2B1F and RB211-524G forward slash H engines, while the other two featured PW4056 engines with the fourth aircraft serving as a backup. Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, certification was received on the 9th of January, 1989, with Pratt & Whitney PW 4000 engines, the 18th of May, 1989, with General Electric CF 680C2S and the 8th of June, 1989, with Rolls-Royce RB211-524GS. As the flight test program proceeded, Boeing encountered problems in the 747-400S production process, leading it to disclose delivery delays of up to one month for the first 20 aircraft built. A primary reason for the delays was the unprecedented complexity of interior configurations offered to airlines, which ranged from lavatory and galley locations to the color shades of cabin warning labels. Coupled with new, relatively inexperienced workers, a lack of veteran technicians, interior configurations needing costly rework, and teething problems with electronics integration on the advanced flight deck, 747 to 400 production fell behind schedule. The company managed to resolve early production issues by mid-1989 with the first example airframes of all three engine variants delivered within four months of each other, and overall delays not exceeding several weeks. Service Entry and Operations, Edit The first 747-400, N661US, was delivered to launch customer Northwest Airlines. This jet became known for an incident on Northwest Flight 85 caused by a rudder hardover. N661US was later sold to Delta Airlines when Northwest merged with it. N661US later became preserved at the Delta Flight Museum. This was the 20th anniversary of the 747-100's first flight. On the 31st of May, 1989, Singapore Airlines operated the first international service using a 747 to 400 on a flight from Singapore to London. In May 1989, one week before the initial delivery to the 747-400's first European customer, KLM, the Joint Aviation Authorities, JAA, shocked Boeing by refusing to grant regulatory certification for the aircraft citing the upper deck cabin floor's resistance to collapse in the event of a sudden decompression. While the manufacturer asserted that the 747-400S cabin floor was no different from the already certified and in-service 747-300, the JAA maintained that the newer model would have a service life into 2020 and beyond and was thus subject to a newer more stringent standard which had been updated to reflect the risk of explosive devices. In the days leading up to the first delivery to KLM, negotiations between Boeing, the FAA, and the JAA resulted in a compromise. A temporary operating certificate would be issued for the 747-400, to provided that the manufacturer develop a structural retrofit for the aircraft within two years. 
the last minute deal allowed KLM and Lufthansa to take delivery of their 747-400S without further delays. After the first 747 to 400 deliveries, Boeing began production on more variants of the aircraft. The first 747 to 400 Combi, able to carry both passengers and freight, was rolled out in June 1989. The 747 to 400 domestic a short-range variant of the aircraft designed for Japanese intra-island services, first flew on the 18th of March, 1991, and entered service with Japan Airlines on the 22nd of October, 1991. A cargo variant, the 747-400F, was first delivered in May, 1993 to Cargo Links. By the end of the 1990s, Boeing was producing four versions of the 747 to 400. Further developments, edit. The extended range freighter, ERF, entered <coughs> service in October 2002. The next month, the extended range, a passenger version entered service with Qantas, the only airline ever to order the passenger version of the 747-400A. Quantas initially used the 747-400A for the Melbourne to Los Angeles and Dallas to Sydney route allowing the completion of the flight with full passenger load and cargo. Prior to the 747-400A, Quantas would complete such flights by blocking out E-zone of the cabin and limiting passenger numbers and cargo. The 747-400A featured the Boeing signature interior which was later made available on the 747 to 400 either as a retrofit on existing 747-400s or factory installation on new frames the 747-400a also introduced some flight deck enhancements including liquid crystal displays lcds which replaced the 6 cathode ray tube crt displays found on the Boeing 747-400. LCDs later became standard on the 747-400 as well, and could be retrofitted to earlier aircraft. The three standby flight displays found on the 747-400 were also replaced by a single combined LCD. The integrated standby flight display, ISFD, which also became standard on the 747 to 400 in late 2003. In the 2000s, as part of an effort to promote sustainable and alternative fuel development, as well as lower emissions, several 747 to 400 operators studied the use of oil extracted from the Jatropha plant. Air New Zealand carried out the first commercial flight using Chitrofa oil for fuel. The airline 747-400 had one engine burning a mix of 50% Chitrofa oil and 50% jet fuel for two hours during the flight while engineers collected data. Continental Airlines tested Chitrofa oil in one of its airliners on the 7th of January, 2009. Jatropha is easy to grow, needs little fertilizer or water, and produces an oil-rich plant. Production of the 747-400 passenger version officially ceased on 15 March 2007. The last 4-400S on order were cancelled by Philippine Airlines, which switched to the 777-300A. The last to order the minus 400 was China Airlines in November, 2002, with the last passenger 747 to 400 constructed in 2005 and delivered in April of that year. It was the 1358th 747, MSN 33737 forward slash B18215. The last 747-400 was A-400 ERF delivered on the 22nd of December, 2009, to Kalita Air. 
Retirement and Economic Value, Edit. The 747-400S Leasing, Resale and Salvage Value has dropped steeply because it is relatively expensive to operate. As most 747-400S are now more than 20 years old, airlines are beginning to replace them. Airlines using the 747-400 have been retiring the model, replacing it with more fuel-efficient aircraft. The main appeal of the 747-400 like its predecessors was its range rather than its capacity, and in most cases it has been replaced by wide-body twin-engine aircraft of similar range, such as the Boeing 777 and Boeing 787 Dreamliner. The change in emphasis from hub and spoke operations to point-to-point -point flights has also reduced the need for jumbo jets. Airlines such as British Airways and Qantas that plan to maintain the same capacity on routes currently served by 747-400S ordered the Airbus 380 rather than the updated 747-8. For example, Delta Airlines reduced the number of flights it operated from the United States to Narita International Airport that were intended to transfer passengers to other destinations in Asia switching to twin-engine wide-body aircraft operating from an expanded hub at Seattle-Tacoma International Airport. Total capacity was cut, but load factors improved. In April 2015, Delta announced it would accelerate the retirement of its 747-400S and replace them either with Airbus A330 or Airbus A350 aircraft, both of which are twin jets. Delta could not keep the 747-S4 without deeply discounting ticket prices. The discounts and increased maintenance required of a four-engine aircraft led to a drag on profits. Since the cost of replacing a 747 to 400 is high, an airline must purchase or lease another wide body. Some operators choose to fly the 747 to 400 to the conclusion of its accepted useful life and then scrap it. The current parts resale value for this aircraft has been reduced to its engines. When a 26-year-old 747-400 owned by Delta flew through a violent hailstorm, the company indicated it was likely the aircraft would be scrapped. George Dimitrov, head of valuations for Flight Global, estimated the aircraft's value before the incident at about $8 million. He noted that this was not the same as its insured value. As discussed in the section on 747 to 400 converted freighters, there is no longer a viable economic model for converting retired passenger 747 to 400 aircraft into dedicated freighters, so most retired passenger aircraft will likely be scrapped. Several airlines have retired their 747-400S from the Trans-Pacific market. Remaining operators in 2014 included Eva Air, Qantas, Virgin Atlantic, British Airways and United Airlines. United's deployment of them also reflected a change in emphasis from Asian hubs to domestic hubs. On the 11th of January, 2017, United announced it would begin phasing out its 747-400S and made its last 747 flight on November the 7th that year. Delta Airlines was the last U.S. airline to operate the Boeing 747, retiring the last of the 747-400 fleet it inherited from Northwest Airlines in December 2017. Impact of the COVID-19 Pandemic, Edit Prior to COVID-19, British Airways, the largest passenger 747-400 operator then, announced that they would have phased out their 747-400 fleet in February 2024, replacing it with the Airbus A350-1000. 
Lufthansa was to retire their 747 to 400 fleet in 2025 as they were to be replaced by the Boeing 777X and the Boeing 747-8i. KLM planned to retire their 747 to 400 combi and passenger fleet in 2020 as they were being replaced by the Boeing 777-300A, the Boeing 787 to 10, and the Airbus A350-900. However, KLM announced it plans to retire its last Boeing.